welcome to the stage, Rain International financier and principal, Paul Hickey. I'm on top of the world. Am I Mike? Is it working all right? Great. Well, it's good to be here. Thanks for coming. I've had a lot of fun. Um, as I was coming out, they were playing I'm on top of the world. I don't know if any of you have seen this picture. That's my wife. She uh, summited Kilimanjaro last year, November 29th. It's 19,000 feet. Can you see what she's holding in her hand? That has a package of soul. And as far as I know, that is the highest package of soul to date. If any of you take one higher, we want to see a picture, send it in to us, we'll put it on the website. But she's a semi-professional mountaineer. She travels around the world, so many mountains. And uh, you know, I'm on top of the world is a great theme for all of you. But that song talks about I've paid my dues and now I'm top of the world. So it just doesn't happen. Somebody doesn't just drop you on top of the world. You gotta pay your dues. That's what all of you are doing right now at this convention. Let's give yourself a round of applause here. Um, just, oh, well, by the way, in case you didn't recognize me, that was me on Thursday night. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh my, what? <laughs> yeah, that was me. Uh, so let me tell you a little about my background really quick because it's actually quite relevant to what I'm going to talk about with you today. And hopefully what I'm going to talk about is going to be a tool for you to be more successful in this business, to make more money in this business, to be better at recruiting in this business. Would you like that? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that's what I'm going to focus on. And uh, just a little about my background. I raise money for fast growth companies. Uh, that's what investment bankers do. That's one of the things they do. And um, there are some of the companies we've raised money for. Um, and when it comes to raising money and investing in companies, you have to do a lot of due diligence and a lot of analysis, which I'll talk a little about in just a moment. But I've also been a serial entrepreneur. Before I got into investment banking eight years ago, I started a couple different companies. One of them was a company that grew very fast that I took public and did well. And over the last oh, 22 plus years, I have seen lots of my friends start companies and be successful. Lots of my friends start companies and fail. And as an investment banker, our job is to analyze companies and figure out which ones are going to continue to be successful. And those are the ones that we want to invest our investors' money in, right? So that's what I do for a living, is I analyze companies to figure out what are the best ones to invest in. And that's one of the things I want to talk to you today in relation to what you're doing and your investment that you're making. So four keys to hyper success in network marketing. There's four major keys. So when we look at companies, we try and figure out what's the business model and is the business model good and is that a successful model? And that's what I want to talk about. What's the success model for people that get into network marketing? Now I've lived in Utah for many years and as many of you know, this is one of the epicenter for network marketing companies are everywhere. And I have lots of friends who have made a lot of money as distributors. I have a number of friends who have made a lot of money starting network marketing companies. I have a number of friends that have lost a lot of money starting network marketing companies. And I've seen everything for the last 20 years that I've been around here. And I've been, as, as a triangle, by the way, uh, yeah, let's hear it for the triangles. Okay, and the squares, come on, you can jump in. Um, I'm analyzing, trying to figure out what is it about the distributors, regardless of what company they work for that are successful, what's the formula? And then what's the formula for the companies that last and that actually are here for the long term and they're successful? Would you be interested in knowing what those formulas are? Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about and this is what I have boiled it down to, it's fairly simple. It's not that complex, and you're going to look at this and kind of go, well, duh, but there's a lot of stuff behind it that we'll talk about for a few minutes. But first off, it starts with picking the right company. If you get involved as an investor, a distributor, in picking the wrong company, you can work really hard, you can be brilliant, and what does it end up with? You end up losing your investment, right? Second thing is you got to get in at the right time. Timing is really important. When you get in will make a huge difference in how much money you get on your investment. 
And when I talk about investment, I'm talking about your time. Investment comes in two forms. It comes in money, and it also comes in time. We all have money and time to invest in different things. How you invest your time will make a big difference in how much money you make, and how you invest your money makes a big difference in how much money you make. So when I talk about investment, all of you in here are investors. You're all investing and have been investing and will continue to invest. So let's talk about if this is the right thing to invest in. We're going to analyze that today. Second thing, or third thing about the success model is I've watched this and I've noticed this, is you've got to be consistent. Whether it's five hours a week or 30 hours a week, that is more important than 20 hours uh, one week a month. Consistency is really a key thing to success in this business. And then lastly is you've got to have a system to follow. Okay? You need a system to follow. You don't have to invent it yourself. You don't have to figure it out. You need a system to follow. And I've seen that with lots of different distributors and lots of different companies. And these four things are really ultimately what make the difference between those that succeed and make a lot of money and those that don't. And there's a really good analogy I want to use here. Being successful in network marketing is a lot like being a pro athlete, being a successful pro athlete. And here's the analogy. Number one, and I'm going to compare a couple things here, the NBA versus lacrosse. Did you know, how many of you know what lacrosse is? Because some of you might not know. Lacrosse is this game, it's a stick with a little net and a hard ball, and it's kind of like field hockey. You take the ball and you try to throw it into the net at the end. And it's a fast growing sport in the United States. And there's actually a pro league for lacrosse players. When they get out of college playing lacrosse, they can go play in a pro league. You haven't really probably seen much of it on TV uh, because it's a very small pro sport right now. So NBA versus lacrosse. So do you think if you have a child and you start them young in a sport and you're thinking, I want them to be in a sport where they can make the most money, potentially I want them to be a professional athlete. If you start them in basketball versus lacrosse, what do you think they have a better chance of making money in? Basketball, there's professional basketball leagues everywhere. And if they're really successful and they play in the NBA, they'll make millions of dollars a year. How about if they're the best lacrosse player in the world? They'll make about 30 to 50,000 bucks a year in that pro league, okay? So picking the right sport is a lot like picking the right company. You have to pick the right company to invest your time in, and if you do, it makes a huge difference in how much money you get in return for that time, okay? Second thing, NBA basketball and lacrosse. Hey, in 30 years from now, lacrosse might be a gigantic sport to be involved in professionally and make a lot of money in. It's not today. So it's also about timing, right? Third thing, invest a consistent amount of time. If you want to be a professional athlete, do you just practice once a month for five or 10 hours? You practice every day, five or six days a week, week in, week out. You're practicing and getting better all the time. Same thing in network marketing. If you want to be a professional network marketer and be successful, regardless of what company or what sport you pick, you've got to be consistent. And the fourth thing, a proven system. You want to be a good NBA basketball, you want to be a good basketball player, what do you need? You need a good coach, right? And you're going to be part of a team. And that's also very similar. In network marketing, you don't have to be good at everything. Remember, we're all good at different things. We got circles and squiggles and triangles and square, right? And network marketing is a lot like a team. It's a lot like a team sport. If you're not good at something, you've got someone in your upline who is. This is a team sport, and that's the same way it works, but you need to have really good coaching if you want to be great at a sport. So it's very, very similar here. So we're talking about being professional athletes, and I'll come back to that a little later. So how do we translate this into actually making money? We've got a success model now. And I want to talk through it and analyze it. So circles and squiggles, just stay with me, OK? We're going to get through it pretty quick. I'll do the analysis. You don't have to. Just listen, all right? Um, so here's the thing. If you're going to make a lot of money, you have to invest. And again, it's time or money. And we're talking about investing our time here today. So if you're investing your time, how much time should you invest? That's the question I want you to ask right now. And it's a question that I want you to be asking by the time I'm done of whether you should be investing more time 
into this based on how good this investment is. So let's go through a couple other things. I want you to think in the next few minutes like an investment banker. I want you to be analytical like me. Let's analyze this investment and see not only is it a good investment to invest your time in, but how much should you invest in it, okay? Um, let's start with two things. We're gonna analyze, if I'm gonna make an investment in any company, the first thing I do is I look at the industry. How's the industry? Is it a good industry? Because if the industry is going down, even if the company's good, they're gonna have a hard time. And then after I look at the industry, if I like the industry, then I'm gonna look at the specific company and see, is that a good company to invest in within the industry? So let's look at the network marketing industry for a moment. All right, number one, this industry is really becoming legitimized. There are 13 companies, network marketing companies, that do over a billion dollars in sales a year now. That has gotten the attention of Wall Street over the last 10 years. And Wall Street is starting to embrace this business model and this industry, and they're starting to invest in it. Usually the bigger companies, but they are starting to really embrace and understand that this is a very, very powerful business model. So that's a good thing for all of us. Secondly, it's a very efficient business model. Network marketing is brilliant because as a distributor, you can never be overpaid and you can never be underpaid. You're paid what you produce. I love that. I absolutely love that about this business model because there's a lot of people that complain they're not getting paid enough and they're probably legitimately right. And some people actually get paid too much. In this business, that's not the case. You can make a million dollars a month and you're not getting paid too much because you deserve that. You created that. That was you. You did the work, you made the investment, and you created that million dollar a month income. Never overpaid in the industry. I absolutely love it. Number two, the third thing that's key, and this you all know, but one of the great things about this business model is you don't have the hassles of the typical business ownership. By a clap of hands, how many of you have had owned your own little small business or even a big business? Let me hear you. Okay, so a number of you have. You know what I'm talking about when we talk about employees and product liability and inventory issues and capital that you need to raise and just marketing, everything that needs to happen. That's one of the brilliant things about network marketing business model. You've got a company that is doing all of that work and allowing you to focus on producing. And if you can focus on producing, then you can make more money. Think about that. If you had your own small business and all you had to do was focus on increasing sales. If that's all you had to do, your other small little business probably would have been quite a bit more successful. So it's a great thing about the marketing, the model of this business. So what about the future growth? Is this industry gonna grow, network marketing? Well, absolutely. The world is starting to turn into a large network, isn't it? I mean, that's what network marketing is all about. It's about networking. And now we're getting so connected with technology like these WhatsApp and WeChat and Line. By uh, applause, how many of you have one of these apps? Skype, WhatsApp, WeChat, Line, or Fiber. How many of you have one of those? Okay. So that is helping immensely to connect with people worldwide. So technology is actually on the side of network marketing. The world's becoming a network. It's making it easier for you to be successful in this industry. It's brilliant. The other thing that's really interesting is we need supplemental income more than ever. This big financial crisis in 2008, 2009 and the gigantic enormous of debt that was incurred to bail it out is not just gonna go away, it's gonna cause inflation. And if you look, uh, I've got a little note there. The house that I grew up in, my father bought it for $15,000. Today, that house is worth about $150,000. So just in my lifetime, a house has increased 10 times in value. So how do you stay ahead of inflation? Because it's coming. It's never going to go away. We're going to continue to get it. We'll probably be worse over the next 10 or 20 years because of all the debt we just took all globally. So how do you stay ahead of inflation? Number one way you stay ahead of inflation is you increase your own income. And that's one of the great things about network marketing is that's in your hands. You can go out and work and increase your own income. And that's going to be needed by people all over the world. As inflation comes, 
people are going to get poor unless they increase their income. They need it. And people are living longer, so they need more income. We're getting healthier. Maybe not in America, but the rest of the world, you know, we're getting healthier and we're living longer. And there's, of course, no job security. So is there a need for network marketing? Absolutely. Is it going to continue to grow on a worldwide basis? Absolutely. And that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and focus on Rain for just a few minutes, okay? So I love the industry. So now we're looking at this company, Rain. What do we look at? We really go kind of deep into the analysis. And I'm going to go quickly through this. But one of the first things we look at when we look at any, investing in any company is the transparency. And what I mean by that is the integrity of the management team. Are they honest? Are they open? Um, and the first thing I noticed when I met Byron Belka is that he came in and literally in the first 10 minutes, he didn't just tell me all the great things. He was telling me about the great things and the challenges they were happening, that were happening in the company a couple years ago. And I appreciated that. And that was a big sign for me that this was a good guy. And the more I got to know him and the rest of the management team, the more I trusted him. And that's not easy for me because it's hard for me with all these companies I see and all the crazy things I see management companies, management do of these companies to really have a deep trust in a company. And I do. And it, and it came pretty quick with Rain, which was a big plus for me and very important. Second thing is you got to look at the background of the management team of any company you invest in. Have they been successful in what they've done before? That's really important. Of course, you know Byron's background. He was really successful in network marketing prior to that. He had management experience. He had distributor experience. And of course, he's always on the distributor side because he's been a distributor for many years too. And I'm seeing him in meeting after meeting talking about new policies, new things, new issues. He's always thinking from a distributor side. So you've got him on your side, which is fantastic to have the head of the company on your side. Okay. We also liked the other people that were involved in the management and their backgrounds, and it made us feel comfortable that this company was going to be managed the right way. And I'm going to tell you, this is probably the number one reason why network marketing companies start and fail. The management is really not a great management team. I just had someone come to me literally a month ago, and this is kind of a common experience over the last 10 years. They came to me and said, oh, I've got a buddy who started a network marketing company here locally, and uh, they need some money. And I uh, just wonder if you could talk to him. And I'm like, all right, I'll talk to him. And I had a, a, you know, an hour conversation with him. There's virtually nothing I can do for them. And they are not going to make it, like a lot of these early companies do. They just didn't have the right management team in place. And they made some very, very foolish um, mistakes in starting this company. So we love the management team here. Very smart. It was, gave us a lot of confidence in Rain. Second thing, or third thing, is we like the compensation plan. Now, I'm not a compensation expert on compensation plans, so we hired someone to come and analyze this plan. And he said, great plan, very generous. And I said, is it too generous? Because if it's too generous, as the company grows, they can get in financial trouble. And no, that, what, what good is that, right? And we looked at it, and we analyzed how much money was left over for the company, and it looked like this was just the perfect balance, enough money for the company to continue to grow and make a profit, and at the same time, be very generous to distributors. So we like the compensation plan. Fourth thing, product. This is really key. Obviously, if you have a great management team in place and the product is not great, that's going to catch up with you. <clears throat> Even if you're growing, sooner or later, that's going to catch up with you as a company. <clears throat> so we did a lot of due diligence on the product. And I'll tell you something that we found that is really rare with network marketing companies we found that people were actually buying the product retail, okay, and using it on a monthly reoccurring basis. And that the retail sales for Rain was like 10 times higher than the average network marketing company. That was really meaningful to us. Of course, we talked to a number of people using it. We talked to some of the doctors. We looked at the research. And we thought, wow, this company has really got a great product. And if you have a great product, that is a good sign that this product is going to be around for a long time because you're going to build a loyal following of customers that love the product, which it has done and which it's continuing to do. <clears throat> and then the fifth thing is when you analyze a company is how's their financial situation? Well, of course, their financial situation, the reason they came to us is because they needed money, but they came really early. They came before they really, really needed the money. They were being smart. They were thinking ahead. And that's why they've kept us involved, is they want to make sure they stay ahead. And I'll tell you one of the other things. Um, actually, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So 
this is just the basics of the due diligence, right? When we look at a company, we actually look at 150 different things. These are the key things to us. So we did a lot of due diligence. This is perhaps the biggest challenge that you have as a distributor trying to pick a company. You can't do that kind of due diligence. The company won't let you. So how do you know you're investing in the right company when you get involved in this industry? You can't. It's virtually impossible. But we did. Because if they want us to bring our investors in, they have to let us do it. So we did it. And I've done it on several other network marketing companies and never made an investment. But Rain passed. They passed. We invested in this company. It's the only company we've invested in as an investment bank. It's the only company I actually invested my own money in because I loved it so much after doing the due diligence. And here's the, love, the thing that I love about this company, which is still true today. It was true two years ago, and it's even more true today. This company for an investor is really still in a low risk position, but pre-momentum. And we'll talk about that in just a minute, but it's very hard to find those combinations. And usually pre-momentum, quite risky time for a network marketing company. This company, because of everything that it's put together, the management, the profit, the product, the financial partners that it has, right? So now Rain has an investment bank, it has a private equity guy, who, brought, who came in as an investor, David Dame, and it has a, a brilliant <clears throat> investor over in Asia, our Asian partner, Danny Pang, did a brilliant job of bringing in Frankie. Frankie is probably the best finance partner we could ever dream of. And he's there putting together this brilliant infrastructure for you over in Asia uh, that you can go feel comfortable to go and build your company, grow 10 times the size it is right now in that Asian market, and they've got the infrastructure and resources to handle it. So you are in a really unique position because most pre-momentum network marketing companies do not have that kind of financial support before they hit momentum. It just doesn't exist. It's very rare. I don't know any other company that I've ever seen around here that has been in that kind of position. So that is a huge benefit to you, right? And I hope that you understand that that should be giving you some confidence. This is one of my key things. I'm hoping to give you more confidence in the company and more confidence to invest because the more confidence you have, the more you're gonna focus on this and the more you're gonna invest in it. <clears throat> and that's gonna help you transfer that confidence to people you're talking to to bring in. So let's come back to the four keys to being really successful in the business. First, you gotta pick the right company. I'm here to tell you that Rain is the right company in this industry and I applaud all of you for picking the, and making that choice. <clears throat> Some of you, took a leap of faith. You didn't know everything that I knew, and you got involved without knowing everything, and I congratulate you for that, but I'm telling you, you're in the right place with the right company. Second thing I want to talk about, getting in at the right time. Let's just talk about this for a few minutes, okay? Um, timing is really, really huge when you're an investor, and you're all investors. So what is the right time to get involved in an investment? I want to give you a quick little example of something that happened to me. Uh, Back in 2002, a company that I started called QCOM was growing like crazy, and I decided to do a public offering and take it public, get it listed on the American Stock Exchange. And so you have to file these papers with the, uh, the government, which is called the SEC. It's a big document that cost me a half a million dollars in legal fees to prepare. Okay? I filed it with the SEC. It takes about six months. And after I filed it, the Iraq War broke out and the stock market just crashed because everybody's scared, and that's when IPOs get canceled, right? And I just thought, oh, I just lost my 500,000 in legal fees because my IPO is going to get canceled, and I'm going to have to start this all over in one or two years. So that's just timing. I had nothing to do with that, right? However, I got really lucky. I had nothing to do with this either, but the Iraq war got over really quick, and everybody got positive, and the stock market came back, and my IPO got completed. It didn't need to get canceled. So I was very fortunate. If I would have filed my IPO six months earlier and was just about ready to complete it and the Iraq war broke out, I would have been over. I would have lost it. So timing is critical. Let me give you one other timing example. How many of you know what Snapchat is? Uh, just a raise of hand. Snapchat, not many of you, okay. I, all of your kids know what it is, I guarantee that. It's an app on a phone and um, basically, it allows you to take a picture of yourself and send it to a network of friends that are your Snapchat friends, and when they see the picture, it disappears in three seconds. 
They can't save it, right? So guess what kind of pictures kids are sending to each other, right? So this company only started a couple years ago. And when it started, I happen to have some inside information on the investors and how this thing happened because it's taken a couple rounds of investment. But if you can see here, somebody bought 10% of the company a couple years ago for $500,000. And that was before the company was even out in the marketplace. Gets into the marketplace and this product went viral. Kids started just sending it to everybody and it just, the growth took off. Long story short, they raised another round of money, another round of money, and 18 months after the first investor put in $500,000, his investment was worth $80 million. That's pretty good timing, right? So when you have a company that's going to grow really fast, where do you think is the best place to invest, right? Of course, it's riskier here, but this is where you want to get in right before it goes viral. Now, the analogy for network marketing companies is it's before momentum, right? That's the best place that you can invest in a network marketing company and get the biggest return. Sure, if somebody invested up here, which they did, someone invested up there, and they're betting on the company's going to keep growing, but they're not going to get the same kind of return on the investment that this guy did, right? So they'll still make money, but they won't get that kind of return. Same thing in network marketing. If you get in before momentum, because during that momentum phase, it's usually about 80% of the company's growth. And it typically happens in a relatively short period of time, about two years. And then the company keeps growing. But if you're going to invest, where do you think you get a bigger return on your investment, your time? Do you think it's here, before momentum, or after momentum? Before, right? And that's the thing I hope you need to understand. Timing makes a big difference. Rain is pre-momentum. So the number of hours you put in today are worth a lot more than the number of hours you put in after momentum. Those hours after momentum are still good. You'll still make a return on them, but you won't get the same kind of return as you get on the hours you put in now before pre-momentum. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so timing. Right now, you guys picked the right company and you got in at the right time. It's brilliant. And that's how you make a lot of money. I'm telling you, go ahead and put it in your little smartphones, in your calendar two years from now. You can quote me. Two years from now, the next conference we do will be at least 10 times bigger than this. It should be at least 10 times bigger. Now, if I'm right, and I am, that means you should be making 10 times more than you're making right now. How many of you would like that? Okay. Would that make a difference in your life? At least 10 times more than you're making now. So, but you have to be active. You can't just sit back. And again, that's why you're here. So I applaud you for that. But that's the potential that can happen in the next two years. And guess what? I think that's right when momentum is going to start. And two years after that, you could be making 10 times more than that time. That's the way this business works. Right, so right now is the time to really be investing. So your hours today are worth more than your hours after momentum. We've talked about that, that, right? Really key for you to understand. So I want you to commit. I want you to be thinking about right now, how many hours can you put in? How much can you invest in this company? Because this is how you can potentially set yourself up for the rest of your life over the next two to four years. This is where your investment can bring you the biggest return literally for the rest of your life. Kind of like this guy that put in 500,000. He really doesn't have to need to work much more, right? 80 million's not bad in 18 months. Well, all right, let me wrap up with a couple more things here. Um, we've talked about the top two things, picking the right company and getting in at the right time. That's half the battle of being successful in this business. You're halfway there. Now, you need to be putting time in, like we talked about, but consistent time is important. Consistent time is really, really important to be successful in this business, in any business, right? And then four, you need to be good at this proven system. 
that they're going to give you, the tools they're going to give you. I'm not going to talk about that. That's what everybody else is talking about here. That's what they're good at. But you need to get good at that. And you don't have to be good at everything. It's like we're talking about on a basketball team, you can be super fast and be a great guard. Or you can be really tall and jump really high and be a great forward or center. You don't have to be great at everything. This is a team. Find out what you're naturally good at. Triangles, squares, circles, squiggles. Figure out what you're naturally good at and get really good at that. And that's how you're going to be able to make the most money in this business. And get a team to support you. That's what this is all, all about, right? That's it. And by the way, I am a triangle, but I like hugs, just so you know. Okay. So I think I'm a triangle inside of a circle, maybe, or something. A um, couple more things, really fast, and I'm going to wrap up here. So this, this concept of picking the right company, getting at the right time, investing consistently, and then getting good at this system, finding out what you're naturally good at and just do that. That's it. It's pretty simple. But that's really what I've seen year after year after year as I've watched this industry. If you do that, you're going to do well. You want to be on the top of the world? Let me hear it. OK. I am so excited to see all of you in two years at the next convention that's going to be in a gigantic place because we can't fit it all in. And you better be coming up to me saying, you were right, I'm making 10 times more money because I invested at the right time. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it.